So first things first, in regards to the setup, um, I actually don't mind the setup to the ball. If there are any little details I would change, it just looks a little too squatty where your rear end gets a little too far behind you. So a little too much knee flex and your pelvis is sitting a little too far back. And there's also this arch in your lower back where ideally long term, I would like to see a little bit more roundness. You can kind of see exactly when I round that out, exactly where that arch is that I'm referring to. So if we just stood a little bit taller, we got a little less bend to the knee flex, you get the chest up, but with the arch in the back out, round it out. Um, you would be in a much better position. And the reason why I say this is because I'm a big believer that the setup doesn't necessarily guarantee anything in the golf swing, but it certainly sets the tone for what your body can or can't do. Meaning if your body's out of position in the setup, you're going to fight it with your golf swing later. Now you might overcome it, but most players typically don't, which is why I like to see the setup as a good foundation. So a little less bend from the knees, which I'll show you visually on camera, a little bit less of the pelvis squatting down and back, and um you know the pelvis more tucked under you and the chest a little taller and that would actually round out your lower back on its own and we'll be able to clean that up and then from there in terms of the movement pattern you've developed this really really big reroute to the hands arms and club which is something that we're going to have to clean up here basically when you take this club back you know the club obviously works very inside now your lead arm your left arm here looks much, much deeper than I can recall seeing it four years back. I went back and checked some of the old video just to get a sense of how much it's changed. This left arm is getting a little too pinned inside your body, in my opinion, and across your chest, with the club also working even more inside. But then from there, the problem is it's not just the fact that the hands are getting a little too far back here, but the club is also very, very flat at this point, right? So the butt end of the club is pointing way outside the golf ball. So when your hands get too flat and behind you and the club is also very flat, oftentimes that's going to create a very, very big reroute at the top of the backswing where everything needs to somehow get in the air. Because obviously there comes a point where you can't keep traveling further behind you, right? You're going to maximize your range of motion and then everything is going to want to work vertically. And that's kind of what we see. Like you have this really big hip turn, which is good in theory, but you do it really early. And so now from here, because your hip turn is maxed out and the hands have worked around you, everything is going to naturally start to travel more up in the second half of the backswing. And so what we see is, is the hands and club and arms don't just travel up. They work up this way, or rather this way, but then they also kick out in front of you. It's like a very, I don't want to call it loopy, but it is to some degree a very loopy inside to over the plane hand path in your golf swing. A little too extreme. So you're going to see your hands go from there to here. But then from here, they kick up and out even more, and then they kick way out in front of you, right? So your hands have gone from very inside to up, and then they kick way out and over. And then here now coming down, not only does your hands and arms get too far out in front of you, but the club just comes down way too steep into the ball. So anything that your body does at this point is typically in reaction to the steepness, meaning you get very steep with the hands out in front of you into the ball. Obviously, it looks like your weight now is going to start to shift into your toes as your body starts to extend up. And that's really just being done to try to shallow the club. So that's why I said anything you're doing on the way down into the ball, I don't put too much emphasis on because it's a reaction from the steepness uh, that you're experiencing, right? Like the club face is good. It's in a strong position. The wrist angles are good. There's no real concerns there. But when the shaft comes down this steep and your hand path rerouted over the top that much, obviously the club's going to kick outside your hands and then your body's going to extend up and stall out uh, to try to make it work, right? And that's where you get all jammed up through the ball. Usually you'll see the trail knee kick in a lot. You'll see a lot of right side bend through impact. And then from there, it's just a guessing game of what's going to happen. Like the club turns over a lot to try to save it and so on. So, of course, I would love to clean up what's happening through the ball. But to me, a far bigger concern is the setup can be a little bit better. But then we also need to change the sequence here. The hands need to work up first so they can actually work a little bit more back as opposed to working, um, you know, so exaggeratedly inside where they work up and then kick out in front of you. So we might need to change the way the loading pattern of the hips work and the direction that the hands work in the backswing to be able to change the way they were coming down. It's going to feel obviously very uncomfortable at the beginning, uh, but these movements have gotten a little too extreme and we do need to clean them up at the moment.